Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to Tuesday night in the Prague seat. Once again, we are going to, as we did last night on the Hudson Valley Squares, by the way, if you haven't seen that episode, please go and watch that. We are going to take the uh, social media music challenge tonight. Uh, let me, before we go over the questions, let me introduce the, the folks here. We've got Louis Nasser from Chicago, uh, my fellow New Yorker, Chuck Alvarez from Pennsylvania, Chad Hutchinson. He's our center square yet again, Eric Porter, also from New York. Stephen Reed, all the way from the wee hours of Scotland tonight. We got Ken Golden, the professor of Prague from New Jersey, and also from Chicago, our twin towers of terror, George Lemay. Greetings, gentlemen. Greetings. Good evening. Ready to take the challenge? Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? All right. I think, so I think here are ready. the questions. Here are the questions, everybody. Band I hate. Band I think is overrated. Band I think is underrated. A band I love. A band I can listen to over and over again. The band that made me fall in love with music the first time. The band that changed my life. A band that surprised me. There are multiple ways to answer that question. A guilty pleasure or two. A band I should be a band I should have seen by now, but just never have live and my favorite band of all time to go see live. That being said, George, kick us off with your challenge answers. All right. A uh, band I hate was kind of hard for me. I hate a lot of bands. Uh, <laughs> we know. <laughs> uh, OK, come with it. <laughs> I'll start with the ones you guys love, just to piss you off. Uh, my gut instinct was to say Guns N' Roses, but that felt a little reflexive, a little safe, maybe. So I give it some more thought and I came up with uh, REM. Uh, this is like the uh, turn the station band in a, the biggest way ever. Uh, the, the vocals make me cringe. The, the musicians are club level musicians. I, I, uh, they have two of the most annoying songs in history for me with that Orange Crush song and that end of the world song. So they are a band that actually- Song like, 89 and- uh... Shiny happy happy people. Yeah, shiny happy people. Oh, God, yeah. I like I like a lot of REM, and I really like Orange Crush, but I get it. I just want a, a, a quick timeout. I thought maybe just because I keep fucking up. The the answer that is a great answer, by the way, George. But I thought the answer had to be in the context of Prague and jazz and the surf stuff, as opposed to just in general. We're just yeah. going in general. Because then my answers are going to change a lot. Oh, yeah. Someone did Brian 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 eight times brought this up. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Lewis, you got to follow that thread a little better, my friend. <laughs> you, you, got, you guys talk so much about fucking food and who knows what else that I, I don't have Maybe, enough time. <laughs> just keep going. Time. Sorry. You miss all eight of them. Here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to blame Anthony for all that. Because oh, he litters up that thread. Anthony, the king of the non sequitur who's not even fucking here. That's right. That's <laughs> what right. The fuck. Mr. Zonson, I got a whole list of prog bands over here. Yeah, <laughs> you can do whatever you want, guys. Whatever you want. All right, all right, all right, all right. Sorry. Sorry. So, and just so everybody knows, I changed mine up a little bit to kind of not replicate everything from last night because I had I had multiple answers for a lot of these things. So yeah, I changed mine up a little bit too. So George, I'm sorry. Go back. Yeah, I don't even like a single riff from those guys, much less a song or an album. So that was easy for me. My band that's overrated. You know, everyone probably goes to overrated means it's a band you don't, don't like, but it's not that. It's a band that their adulation and praise is not commensurate with what you think they are. And for me, that nothing says that like you too. I don't particularly dislike them, but man, the way that they keep things like genius or uh, brilliant on them all the time, everything they do is like they fart flowers and they, they, they drip gold. I mean... It's just enough. I hear these guys and I think, eh, eh. That's, great that's all I ever think about them. And even Prague guys are like, I don't like them, but you got to admit they're, no, I don't have to admit they're anything. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't got a nothing. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, I, I saw a, a video with Henry Rollins one time and he said, it's got to be the worst rhythm section ever in a popular band. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I can't say, I can't say much for Bono's voice either. I always feel he's yelling at me. Yeah, so they're meh for me. I underrated band again. Uh, I think it's every 
band people think it's every band I like that never got uh, popular or, com or had commercial success, but it's not really that. For me, it's a band that even the people in your genre don't recognize you. So I would say thank you, scientists, because even in Brog circles, half the people don't know them and the half that do know them have a problem with them in some way. And I, I think they're one of the best. So I would say they're underrated. The band I love is Haken. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows that. Um, to me, every album has been great. Not a down moment in their whole catalog. And uh, it's very, hard, very few bands I can actually say that about. The band I can listen to over and over, my thought here was it had to be at least a band that goes back to at least the 80s. So you can test the theory that you can listen to them over and over if you can listen to them that long. They have to be a band I like not just eras of, but all eras. And they have to be a band I still follow the new stuff. For me, that's Dream Theater. Um, I'm always at least interested in what they're doing. And I like almost all of it, some of it less than others. But I don't just listen to a couple albums. I listen Astonishing. to every one I don't listen to. <laughs> oh. um, the band that made me fall in love with music was the easiest one of all these, Rush. Uh, not long after I went from pass, uh, passive listener to music collector, the first band I started getting albums from and then chasing the whole discography, had to have it all, was Rush. So that, that was easy for me. Then that changed my life. Uh, I went Returner Forever here because they are a band that made me take on a, no, a whole nother genre. I was only listening to rock stuff at the time and they made me dive into that genre. I'm lucky that that was one of the first bands probably that I heard out of Fusion because it totally changed the way I listen to music. The band that surprised me, I had some problems with. As you guys remember, I asked in the chat a way to approach this and Chad was like a band that, think about a band that literally su surprised you, something about it literally surprised you. And being a metal kid and a, a guy that grew up with fusion, you always, the dream was always one somebody that put them together. And you hear about bands that supposedly do that and it's, it was always disappointing until I heard Panzer Ballet. Panzer Ballet for me is the actual mix of that, not a, it's usually a metal band that just has a couple jazz tropes that don't really fit in, but Panzer Ballet is the real deal. Okay. Guilty pleasure. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are going to say this, but I don't have any really. Uh, no shame in anything I listen to, and even the commercial bands that your boys might make fun of you for, they all know about. Everybody knows. All my buddies know. I like 311. I like No Doubt. They can't make fun of me at, at this point for that stuff. There is one, but we, but we can, George. Yeah, you guys can. <laughs> there is one band that I haven't, I probably don't talk to my friends about because I don't simply just because I don't think anybody would like them. A band called The Reign of Kindo, very commercial, but uh, killer drummer, great piano player. And uh, I like the vocals. I think a lot of people would not like the vocals, but I think he's really good. Um, Band I should have seen but haven't. I didn't really have anything for this because I usually make a point to see those kind of bands. But I'll say Caligula's Horse. Uh, they haven't played my area. I'd have to go to Prague Power to see them, and I just haven't done it. Uh, my favorite live band ever is uh, Chick Corea Electric Band. I'm not a guy that likes. I don't care about like spectacles, laser shows, and fire fire bombs and all that. For me, the chops are the show. So uh, electric band is the fiercest improvising unit I've ever seen. So they're for me, they're, they're the favorite live band. Cool. That's it. All right, we're off to a good start. Ken. <clears throat> the band I hate, uh, Stanley Eisen and Chaim Witz, also known as Kiss. I absolutely hate Kiss <laughs> with a passion. I mean, I grew up in New York City. I'm well aware of those guys. And to me, they are like the Donald Trump of rock. They are, you know, they're grifters. They're a bunch of non-musicians. It's all about money. I think that con artists, carnival barkers, non-musical motherfuckers. I I'm just, just watching Steven. Just watching I, Steven. I just, 
I'm sorry. I mean, I, I mean, when I, we, just call, we just call music for morons. I mean, but you know what? In, in, in addition to all you're saying, Ken, then there's also a dark side. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> no, I mean, to me, you know, it's about it, 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 it's it's about kiss coffins and, uh, you know, merchandising. It's not about music. The music is so, very simplistic. I, I never got off on those guys on in any way, shape or form. When I was growing up, we had I remember there were kids in high school with kiss army jackets. We used to beat the shit out of them. I mean, they, wow. they were just well, I mean, it was just like it was like a, they were they were a joke. And to me, they're still a joke, very wealthy joke, you know, but, you know, and, you know, you, you guys ever see the video of Carol Kay trying to show Gene Sims how to play? Yes, it, it's a masterpiece. I mean, unbelievable. Yes. It's a got no feel. He's got nothing. You know, you know what he's got? He's got he's got like a 300 pound suit that he wears. And uh, and Don't you ever watch the hair. video? You ever watch the video of him on stage peeing on stage? You ever see that? Because he can't get out of his suit and he's got to take a leak, he just pisses himself right there on the stage. Unbelievable! I hate Kiss. Ken, Ken, you yes. say that you piss yourself and shit yourself over really good music. So, well, but I, you know, <laughs> but, that's all I can tell you. But but I got to tell you, better music than that. It sounds literal. Much better music than what he's putting out. <laughs> you know, I, I would. You know, I. I mean, they were making disco albums. I mean, it was just That's you know, not a disco album. Don't, oh, don't come on, all this please, nonsense. please, please. That is, that is it was made for loving you, Stephen. That is yeah. that is musical. <laughs> that is musical He's got garbage. Yeah. Absolute, <laughs> absolute garbage. And I hate that band. I never liked that band. I never liked anything about them. I never liked them when they when they made the movie, that idiotic movie, uh, with, with the Phantom of the Park, or whatever the fuck it was. There you go. There you go. I, I just, I never <laughs> like Kiss. I hate that band. Well, that's the yeah, first I'm question. Ken, Ken's got to let you go, guys. <laughs> huh? Hey, what's up with George? Yeah, yeah. yeah. George, George Rose. You're I offended upset George. George. He left. I offended George so much. He left. <laughs> I, I think you may have just had angina from so much <laughs> that dissertation. <laughs> um, I'm Eric's leaving. Oh, now, now Eric's leaving. My God, I'm clearing, I'm clearing the room. You're going to upset people. Ken, that's what's going to happen. I've had enough. I'm clearing, I'm clearing Actually, the, room. the secret's out. They both live in the same place and they're both conspiring with each other now. Oh, oh no. Oh, is, I'm Eric. just going to put this in my square. Eric, I, I would set that. Eric, Eric, I would set it on fire and then I would pee on it, just like Gene Simmons does when he's on stage. Uh, the band that I think is overrated. People are gonna hate me for this. Uh, Kansas. Uh, oh. I had a feeling you were gonna say that. I, I don't. I don't know. But let me say, kind of going back to what George says, I don't dislike Kansas, and I don't think they're a bad band. I think they're a very good band, but. To me, I don't see them, you know, in terms of magnitude of all the progressive rock bands I grew up with and listened to. To me, Kansas, they're kind of they 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 kind of came out of that whole Midwest rock scene. I was they always got lumped in with like REO Speedwagon and 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 all that Midwestern you know hard rock stuff. They were clearly far more intelligent far better musicians, far more interesting, but they were just never part of my musical curriculum. And um, they're, I, 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 they're, to me, they're an American phenomena. I don't think they have any, any popularity in Europe. Uh, I don't, you know, I think it's just really, uh, you know, uh, just kind of a, a Midwestern US thing. They've made some great albums and I just don't think they're as good as people make them out to be, you know, I, I, I kind of nicknamed them hillbilly prog, you know, I just, oh. you know, remember, you know, well, I'm sorry, you know, guy standing there in overalls playing a fiddle. I mean, come on, but, um, <laughs> you know, but, but again, I, I, I don't make it sound like I don't like these guys or they're fine. You know, you I are making it sound like that. <laughs> I, 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 I actually, own, I probably, by the way, like by the way I, I think uh, George, George left to put his uh, cat makeup on. I think he, I think he's no, I think he's the spaceman. He's a drummer though, he's gotta be the cat. Yeah, George yeah. has to be Peter Chris. 
The, yeah. and you should be ashamed just for knowing that. that. Wrong. <laughs> I, anyway, I own the first five. I am like ashamed first, for knowing that. I own the first five Kansas albums. They're great albums, but in terms of overrated, I think they're overrated. Good band, just not in a, a transcendental band for me. The band that I think is underrated, Renaissance. Renaissance to me is a is a band that, I mean, I've seen them many times, and they were a they were an East Coast phenomena. They never broke out on a large scale. That they, they wrote great music, great progressive music, had an incredible front woman, and I always thought that they should have been bigger than they were. Um, great bassist. Great, ba yeah, love John Camp. You know, they always. You know, they should have, I always thought they should have been somebody, you know, they should have been bigger. Uh, band that I love, everybody knows, Emerson, Lincoln Palmer. They're, they're my favorite band. And uh, the band that I could listen to over and over again, not a band, but a musician, Robin Trower. I, oh. I first started seeing Robin Trower. Yeah. First time I saw him was 1980, I think it was. And the guy's still making relevant music. And he's just somebody... I could just sit there all night long and I could just listen to Robin play. Question, was, was Doer still with him at that time in 80? Uh, the first time I saw him, I believe I saw him with Jimmy Doer. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, I saw him with Davey Patterson. I've seen mm -hmm. him like two or three times and he's, to, you know, the master of the Stratocaster. And just there's just something about the way he plays that resonates with me. And I could just I could just go through twice removed from yesterday, bridge of size for Earth below. You know, I just caravan of dreams. Doesn't matter. I just go through it all. Uh, I could just sit through all night long and listen to Robin play and never get tired of him. Uh, the band that made me fall in love with music was actually Genesis. Um, when I really started getting into progressive rock, which was 1976, I heard Trick of the Tail more times that summer for the rest of my life but i you know but it became part of my dna and that really helped spark the uh my interest and uh the band that changed my life i told the story rick wakeman when i saw that first time i saw rick wakeman on the mike douglas show in 1976 when he was out promoting uh, uh actually 75 when he was out promoting journey to the center of the earth and i had never seen anything like it and I watched this guy play standing with a cape, long blonde hair. That was back when I had long blonde hair. And uh, believe it or not. And uh, not. I was amazed. I didn't know what a synthesizer was. This guy was making sounds like I had never heard. And it was, it was fucking incredible. And that sparked my interest in, in music and progressive rock, really. Um, the band that surprised me, I actually have two here. If... Arian's watching, Arian. Arian really surprised me because I had, at that point, I was deeply enmeshed in prog rock and I really didn't listen to much metal. You know, I grew up with hard rock bands in the 70s, but I never really listened to, you know, 80s or 90s metal. And then when I heard The Final Experiment and he married, you know, metal with all these musicians like, you know, the keyboard player from Finch you had all these guys from the seventies coming out and playing and he, and, and it kind of meshed together and made this one, you know, this one album that just blew me away. I didn't know I had never heard anything like it. That really surprised me. And the other band that really surprised me was Spiral Architect because at that point I had the label going and I'd heard Cynic and I liked Cynic but technical metal wasn't really something I was too invested in. There were bands out there, but, uh, you know, Watchtower, I didn't really know very well. But when I got the demo for Spiral Architect, that just, that just blew my mind. I mean, that just short-circuited my brain. And uh, that, really, that was something that really surprised me. Uh, guilty Pleasures. I like, actually like a lot of pop music. I, like, I love Squeeze. Saw Squeeze at the Peppermint Lounge, surprise concert. Loved Joe Jackson before he became like a, well, he was always an asshole, but, you know, but he, he used to, well, he is, Joe, Joe's an asshole, he is, but he makes great music. Um, 
I like a lot of female vocalists. I like Sade. My wife loves Sade. She got me into Sade. Went mm -hmm. to see her at Radio City. Um, there's a jazz singer, Cecile McLaurin Salvant. She's mm -hmm. a magnificent singer. Love her. Uh, great singer and jazz pianist, Shirley Horn. Uh, I love I love Shirley Horn um, and her trio. Uh, and uh, so, you know, that's some of, you know, I guess you call those guilty pleasures. Band I should have seen by now, but I haven't. Iron Maiden. Never saw Iron Maiden. Wow. Always wanted, kind of wanted to see Iron Maiden. And I, if, had they played Philly on this last tour, I would have seen them. But they played up in Newark and I wasn't going up to Newark. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, somehow I just, I just miss seeing them. Uh, I, I think I misinterpret maybe in misinterpreted the last one. The favorite, what I have is favorite band to see live. For me, it's Morgable. I mean, you know, I, I don't know that I would say Morgable's my favorite band to see live of all time, but I could tell you that when I go see Morgable, I have a great time. They're just the most fun to go out and see. And I walk in and out with a big smile on my face. And, uh, you know, and they, they never, they never fail to impress me. So yeah, they're, they, I'll call them my favorite band to see live. Cool. That's what I got. All right. Oh, by the way, did I mention, guys, I don't know if I mentioned, I fucking hate Kiss. I really hate Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> that is like, you know, the total grifters, con artists, you name it. I don't like them. Steven, you're up. Mm. That should be interesting to follow that then. Okay. Yeah, no, right? <laughs> <laughs> Band that I hate, th this was easy for me, because I hate the doors. I absolutely hate the doors. I hate that <laughs> keyboard sound. It's just garbage. And Jim Morrison, I mean, you don't want to talk Hill of the Dead and all that kind of stuff. It's just stupidly bad. It's like someone's got a bellows. And it's like, <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> absolutely hate it. So yeah, definitely the doors, band I hate. Uh, band I think is overrated. Uh, yeah, shooting fish in a barrel here. It's got to be Nirvana. You know, they reinvented everything. They supposedly ripped it all up and started it again. And it was just, oh, navel That's a great up. answer. They didn't do anything new. They didn't do anything differently. They just did it in baggy jerseys and slung low guitars that just stared at their feet. Utter nonsense. Uh, band I think underrated. This one, YMT. This band had everything. Should have had absolutely everything. Dave Manichetti is an undersung hero, amazing guitarist, phenomenal vocalist, wrote great songs, amazing live. Considering what made it from that scene, should have been absolutely huge. No reason for them not to be. Band I love. <laughs> there you go. I'm all about the grifter. I really am. This is the band I love. This is the band I absolutely adore. I like all eras. I like the elder. I like the disco album it's not a disco album don't listen to ken it's 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 total shite come on it's absolute oh no it's not there are some really good stuff on that album really go, good stuff Steven. <laughs> go buddy absolutely it's really unmasked is excellent shandy love it great stuff love the, the non-makeup years i love everything about that band Ooh, lick it up baby lick it up there you absolutely go. Right, uh, Creatures of the Night, one of my favourite albums of all time. Is it all perfect? Is it all fantastic? No. Are Although, to be fair, Creatures of the Night doesn't really have Kiss on it. It has the, studio the, guys, and, the, and, and they that, play... That is not the fair, they, they definitely nodded at each other in the studio at some point. There's no two ways about it. <laughs> they nodded. <laughs> They looked at each other at some point. Okay, that makes it a kiss album. That's not in the bathroom. In the, this ba is in, the men's room. in the men's room of the power station. <laughs> this, is, this is why I love them. Yeah, the caskets and all that. I don't have any of this stuff. You don't need to buy this stuff. But You're not going to get buried in the kiss there. casket? Absolutely not. Not a chance. I'm going to, I sleep in one every day when I'm alive. No, I don't. You don't need piss <laughs> You don't need piss toilet roll. It's all out there. If you want to buy it, well, are they wrong? No. It's the same as any other money-making organisation. They got it right. But I tell you what, you go see this, and it's phenomenal. I don't care what anyone says. Absolutely phenomenal. Are they flawed? Absolutely. And that's not why they are the band that I can listen to over and over again. They are not, all right? Because I understand 
why people hate them so. This is the band that I can listen to over and over. I like all years. I like everything about them. There's a couple of albums that I'm not so keen on. Yes, I will admit that. They, you never quite know what you're going to get. They do things on their own kind of we they're not going to be swayed by anybody absolutely phenomenal and just i can listen to all eras over and over again phenomenal band okay the band that made me fall in love with music specifically this album this is 12 gold bars by status quo i know that they don't really translate over into the us quo were my gateway into all of this this album specifically just filled with rock and roll boogie hits. It's pretty simple stuff. It's heck of an infectious. Absolutely love them. Still do. But that was the album that we listened to when I was young. My brother got me into that. Anyone that's watching can have a drink now. And it's all, it just takes me to a time and a place. And absolutely from there I went and got all the core catalogue. And it really invigorated me in a way that nothing else had at that point. And I have to include them in the band that changed my life because it's not a band, it's a time. Status Quo, Kiss, Iron Maiden, ACDC, except I can keep going. Lots and lots and lots of bands from that era changed my life because they have shaped who I am, they have shaped what I buy, they have shaped what I listen to, they shaped the friends that I've got. They genuinely set a path for me. And yes, there have been bands since that have opened my eyes to different things, but they really made a difference to me. Okay, so bands that surprised me is Spock's Beard, because I really didn't like Spock's Beard at all. And this is not a Neil Morse thing, okay? But when he left, I heard a couple of albums and thought, these are great, I really like these. That was a real surprise to me. I like this era of the band and I like everything they've done since. Still don't like the early stuff. Don't know why, it just doesn't connect with me at all. So it really surprised me because I expected not to like these albums and I do. Guilty pleasure. Well, we've done a whole show on this and I've spoken about a whole load of things like theme tunes and all this kind of stuff. I love that kind of music. I went for something slightly different for this this time because I have picked an album that I will happily admit is garbage, okay? And I really like this album, okay? This is, a, this is one of these, it's like a demonstration album, is what it is. This is, cover your eyes, okay, if you're a bit weary, because look at this, wow, look at this. <laughs> this is the Moog album. And this is just an album really by, by Perry and Kingsley. It's, 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 Ger it's Gershon Kingsley, right? Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. Okay. Perry and Kingsley. And this was to give you an idea of what the Moog could do. Wow, it's shit. It's utter garbage. It's the biggest pile of nonsense you've <laughs> ever heard in all your life. It's hilarious. It's so bad, it's funny. I mean, the stuff on there that's written by them, it's just random pings and noises and nonsense and they all tend to have a beat that goes and they're brilliant i mean you can't put it on and not have everyone just kind of go it, is, it stops everything in its tracks it's brilliant but they have the nerve to do things like strangers in the night on here it's so bad that i love this album is it a guilty pleasure yeah because i feel guilty when i make people listen to it, and I make <laughs> listen to it. Hey, Stephen gershon kingsley had a song a very famous song called popcorn okay and if you google pop, this gershon kingsley popcorn you'll recognize it immediately you've been hearing it your whole life uh, yeah it's not on this i do have umbrellas of sherwood no okay umbrellas <laughs> of sherwood yeah, Berg, Berg, Berg. 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 I am Berg. educated, sophisticated. I love educated. Kiss, the way. Yes, yes. <laughs> Band I should have seen now, but haven't, and I'm glad you're all sitting down. And I even brought this album for our absent friend. I have not seen Jeff Lotel live. Okay, Me either. Me either. Anderson live. 
I haven't seen Martin Barr live. I plan to change that bit next year, by the way. I haven't seen anything to do with Jethro to live. I don't know why, because he's even played Perth a few times. Okay, favourite band to see live? The Wild Hearts. Okay, I love the Wild Hearts. I make no bones about it. One of the reasons that I love to go and see the Wild Hearts live, yep, they're a great band. Yes, they're tight. Yes, they have great songs. You never quite know what you're going to get. Are they going to be brilliant or are they going to hate each other that night and fall apart? Mm -hmm. Will they make it through the show? Will they not? Will it be a life-changing experience or will it be a life-changing experience? You never quite know. And that jeopardy makes going to see the Wild Hearts, who currently don't exist, may exist next week and not the week after, who knows? It makes it such a phenomenal experience because when it works and it clicks, oh, wow. And when it doesn't, you've got months of conversation with your friends. I love to go and see the Wild Hearts. And that's me. All right, cool. <clears throat> Eric. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, Good evening. Band I hate, I almost put this into a genre. Um, <laughs> I hate punk. I don't like it. I don't get it. I don't get the attitude. Um, Sorry, Chuck. <laughs> so, I mean, to me, the first thing that comes to mind when I think of punk rock is the Ramones. And that's just me. I can't stand them. I, I, I don't get it. So um, it's obviously not for me. And I do truly hate the Ramones and pretty much any punk I've ever heard. Band I think is overrated. I took some shit for this from friends of mine. Um, bad company. I find I them pretty boring, to be honest with you. I don't hate them, but a couple songs here and there. Obviously, Paul Rogers has a great voice, but I really find them boring. Um, sorry, but that's that's uh, overrated to me. Band I think is underrated. Um, I've been doing a lot of homework for this. It's an artist I've gotten into probably within the last year or two. Derek Sherinian, um, Planet X. He's played with uh, Black Country Communion, Dream Theater, his solo albums. He's got a kiss behind the stage, though, Stephen. Nobody saw him. He was there. He played. He was. Um, we don't know. But, but, but I'll tell you who didn't play. I'll tell you who didn't play. Kiss the kiss the easy. Play. Go easy. Kiss is coming, Karen. Go easy. Because <laughs> he's a great writer. Doesn't, has, doesn't, 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 what, doesn't he lip sync? Now doesn't Paul Stanley lip sync now? He may no. now. Not in the past. <laughs> Not in the past. Um, but I think oh. Sherinian's a great writer. He has unbelievable guests. And he's one of these guys. You know, I I know we talked about him and Rudis. I love his playing. I love his sounds. Jordan might be a better player technically. I'd take Derek any day over Jordan Rudis. And I, I think I know why. If I may. Sure. Uh, and by the way, I, I, I'm agreeing with you completely. Right? He plays but, like a guitar player. Exactly. He's a guitar player that plays keyboards. Wow. That's but what it is. Sound, you can get those sounds. I Jordan a lot of times has kind of those twinkly sounds, and I'm like, Derek is just ball. Pete said it best last week, right? Isn't that yeah. what you said? That's his attitude. He's got a guitar player's attitude. Um, yeah. But also, he's got these solo albums where it's not just him. He lets those guys rip on those records, and I, I just don't think he gets enough attention. I know he's played with a lot of people. He's probably got a great name in the business. But he he just deserves more attention, if you ask me. Um, for a band I love, Kansas. I can listen to Kansas. I heard this. Um, I, I don't know if it was Ryan who brought it up. Kansas puts me in a great mood. And actually, their last couple records, I, it's hard to match that early 70s. But I think they've done a great couple records. Um, those lat, what, uh, Prelude Implicit and... And I think uh, Platt, Ronnie Platt, does a great job on vocals. Uh, I would not want to be somebody who's stepping into Steve Walsh's shoes because Steve Walsh was amazing in his time. Yep. Um, band I can listen to over and over again. They have a fairly small catalog, but Gentle Giant. I, I feel like every time I put them on, I hear a little something different. And I've listened to those records for years, but I can throw a Gentle Giant record on 
I could probably listen to them every day and I don't know that I'd tire of it. Um, this is for Ken, the band that made me fall in love with music. It's oh. Kiss. Um, <laughs> I was, you know, I was whatever, 10 years old in 76. My next door neighbor got Destroyer for Christmas and it was all over. And oh my God. It may have been a small period of time, three, four years. I didn't see them till Dynasty. Um, I was going into eighth grade. It was the night before I started eighth grade. So I'm in Springfield, Massachusetts. Um, and even though a lot doesn't stay up here these days, I still retain that memory. Um, I, they just did. I mean, that Kiss got me. My first records were Kiss. That got me into music. I wanted to play guitar because of Ace Frehley. And he's good, Ken. He might not be technically good, but Ace can play a solo. Well, man. the problem, they kicked him out of the band because he could play. Well, <laughs> well they kicked him out of the band because by that time he couldn't speak. <laughs> that, well, that might be true, too. Yeah. Uh, the band who changed my life and is probably the reason I've connected with all of you guys was Genesis. Um, Genesis put, I actually got into Marillion, uh, the guy who introduced me to, you know, I knew Yes songs on the radio and but Prague to me really didn't mean much. And then, and I knew Genesis from misunderstanding and that kind of stuff. And when I got trick and went in Wuthering and got introduced to Genesis, that just set me on a path. And I've been into Prague ever since. Band that surprised me, and I'm only using this because it's a genre that outside of the Almond Brothers, I don't listen to country. Um, I respect the musicianship of country, but it's just not my thing. Blackberry Smoke. I love them. I think Charlie Starr is incredible. They write yeah. great songs. He's a great player. They're, they're very respectful to uh, bands like ZZ Top, the Almond Brothers. They, they pay a lot of homage to those bands. Um, but I think they write great music. And it's just a band that I think... My friends and everyone else would say, I can't believe you like that band. That doesn't fit what I would expect you to like, but I love them. And the great um, life. Guilty I've pleasure. I've never heard of them. What's that? I've never even heard of them. Blackberry yeah. Smoke? Yeah, I think they're kind of, they've got a little bit of everything. They, they, they really do have a countryside to them. Uh, they've got rock and blues, and it's just not my normal listening thing, but I, I dig them. Um, I did go back and check the Guilty Pleasure show to make sure I wasn't going to repeat myself. I love 70s pop. I love Yacht Rock. But I've got to say, I think this goes along with what Ken said. I could lin listen to Linda Ronstadt sing anything. I love her voice. Those 70s records. My mother had a couple of those records. I could listen to Linda Ronstadt anytime you want to put her on. I'll, I'll listen to it. Um, band I should have seen. This is embarrassing. The Who. I've never seen The Who. Oh. Yep, I know. That's awful. I hate to admit that. And uh, great band to see live. I'm going to cheat. I don't usually go off course on this show, but I'm going to I'm going to name three. Weasel Zappa, um, because I never got to see Frank, and I think he puts on an incredible show. Steve Hackett. Um, again, I never got to see Genesis in their prime, so getting to see Steve Hackett. I get to hear that stuff that I would have never had a chance to hear otherwise. And maybe not today, um, but I've seen Zebra about 10 times and they've always killed it when I've seen them. So those are my uh, bands I would see. I'd love to see live. Cool. All right, Chad. All right. Well, bands I hate. Luckily, Ken has already taken care of Kiss. Oh. and Stephen has already taken care of the doors. So I'm going to go with Creedence Clearwater Revival. Oh. I don't dislike a voice and a guitar and a swamp rock sound more than that fucking band. I don't care if it's John Fogarty. I don't care if it's their, their you know, the CCR stuff. That, I think George said, that is an immediate radio station turn immediate <laughs> luckily xm gives me that split second when i change a channel i can see it on the display and i can just keep going <laughs> can't stand ccr awful just awful the old main is down the road all center field that bullshit sucks it's horrible absolutely horrible um 
Band, I think, is overrated. So I was a little quiet on our chat the other day for this reason. And I know some of you will not agree with me. And I don't dislike this band. But for me, Metallica is overrated. I don't like their early stuff. I don't like the thrashy plastic guitar sound. You know, the the chugga 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 all the time. Um, and Justice for All, I can't listen to because of the production. I don't really like what I heard anyway. I do like the Black Album. I like some of... What's, what's the Sit next anger. one? Load Sit has anger. a couple of decent songs. But Load. beyond that, Load. I like Death Magnetic. But Alps, I mean, wh what in the last 10, 15 years did they put out that people were like, oh my God, Metallica's still putting out great shit. I don't hear anything about that. People still go to their live shows. They love what they've done in the past, but I don't hear anything about anything they've done new. They just keep showing up on different you know, collaborations and doing their tours and showing up on TV shows or whatever. I, I don't get why they're they're quite as big as they are, but that's me. That's me. Um, a band I think is underrated. Uh, for me, it's absolutely mortgable. Chris Chris uh, Christoph Godin's name should be household. He should be uh, as famous in guitar circles as someone like Eddie Van Halen or Joe Satriani or Steve Vai. Um, he's an absolute wonder in the guitar. And you bring, like Ken said, how much fun they are to see live. You'd think people would be clamoring to go see what they do and how they pull it off. I don't get it. I just think they're phenomenal. They're great guys. We've talked about them before. Morgable's vastly underrated, in my opinion. Um, bands I love, this will come as no surprise, that would be Rush. I'm a lifelong Rush fan since, uh, uh, since I could turn on the TV and watch the early days of MTV and get introduced to stuff. Um, and really, that's my answer to the next one, too. Bands I can listen to over and over again. It's Rush. I, I can put on any era. It can be the first album. It could be Clockwork Angels. It could be Grace Under Pressure. I don't care. I like, I like all of it. Obviously, some more than others. But I can dive into any part of their catalog any day of the week, any live album, any bootleg, and enjoy myself immensely. Um, this one's going to be an interesting one, but uh, bands that made me fall in love with music or bands that, um, believe it or not, it's uh, Hall & Oates. So in the early days, I started off, you know, a lot, and some of my answers later are going to come back to this too, but I started off, my, my initial introduction to music, a lot of it was MTV. But before that, I would listen to our, our local radio station called, um, it was 98.1 WCA UFF. And I would have had this little one speaker transistor type radio. And I would kiss listen to radio. Like, What's that? Did you have the kiss radio? The uh, that kiss would be transistor no. radio? Eric, <laughs> Eric did. <laughs> Chad has some self respect. <laughs> a little bit. Just a little bit. We'll see later. Um, so I would put this, I would sneak the radio into my bed, put it under my pillow, put it about as quiet as I could, and listen to like the top 10 countdown or whatever time it was. And I fell in love with uh, I Can't Go For That and um, Same. Uh, things like Private Eyes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was nine, 10 years old at the time, you know, 10, I guess. And the first, that's those are the first songs that made me want to buy an album. And I remember going to Sears back when Sears sold 45s and cassettes and LPs. Mm -hmm. And the first album I ever owned was the cassette of Private Eyes. And that kind of sort of put me in the mode of, Oh uh, yeah, I can buy stuff and listen to this stuff whenever I want. You know, it started to started to click. Um, band that changed my life, it's got to be the Mighty Van Halen. They're the first band I latched onto very heavily. They're the first band I went and collected their entire catalog. Uh, just fell in love with all of it. And this is this is this is probably eighty three, eighty four. So um, it was just Dave at that point. We were didn't even get into the Sammy stuff. So yeah. Van Halen went back through the whole catalog, soaked it all in, just couldn't get enough of, of Eddie's playing. Um, so let's see. Bands that surprised me, I have two. The first one is actually Marillion. Uh, in college, this had to be 91, 92, 92, fall of 92, a uh, fraternity brother of mine uh, was trying to, he wanted to go see them at the Chestnut Cabaret in Philadelphia. And he couldn't get anybody else to go. He knew we had some stuff in common, like uh, Rush and the Moody Blues and, and things like that. And uh, he said, will you go see Marillion with me? I can't get anybody to go. 
I said, I don't know, Andy, I don't know any, I don't know this band because you must know Kaylee. So he puts Kaylee on. I'm like, maybe, mm. maybe I heard this. A little familiar. <laughs> I don't know. So I, he goes, I'll tell you what, I'll buy the ticket. I'll drive and I'll buy dinner. I said, okay, I'll go. <laughs> so we go to the, we go there and um, we actually were a little bit late. So we're way in the back corner and they come on. And I think they started with like King of Sunset Town. So it's this big build up, and then boom, it explodes, right? And my eyes open. I was like, whoa, this is kind of cool. So, you know, they play an hour and a half of sh- stuff I've never heard of. Then they come back on and play Easter and everybody's singing it but me. And I'm going, <laughs> what am I missing? <laughs> and it was very, very cool. You know, they get to the end with the do 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 stuff. And and I was I was just floored by the the fandom and all that. Um, and then I think they closed the show with Incommunicado, and that that was the end. And I went immediately to Rainbow Records at the University of Delaware in Newark, Delaware, and bought Seasons End and Holidays in Eden that night or the next day. And I was in. The next time they came around in the spring for the six of one tour, uh, I was up against the stage um for the entire show i was belly against the front so that that was it they surprised the hell out of me that night that first night and i was in and the second one actually would be uh the california guitar trail i had no idea what they were i went to see king crimson at the tower theater with a friend of mine it was actually the night i met chris busby of echoing who's outside handing out flyers and my buddy ted and i went in you know going to see crimson we're talking crack era and this band comes on the three guitars, interweaving all kinds of stuff. I'd never heard anything like it, and I just thought it was it was a lot of fun. It was very fun to listen to. Went went back and again bought a couple of their albums, and that's why I like Mike Kud because that that started me down the path of that stuff. So that's a nod to Luis. Um, guilty pleasures. So I brought up MTV before. So I'm that's that's just my age. You know, MTV came on what eighty two, and that's what I sat and watched all the time. Couldn't wait for the new videos, all this new stuff would come on, stuff I had never heard of. Um, and on the radio, of course, at the same time, you're getting all the 80s one-hit wonders. Part of my guilty pleasure is that whole early 80s crap that I know Ken probably hates with a fucking passion, <laughs> but I like a lot of that goofy shit. And some of the bands I've latched onto, some are goofy, some are not. Um, I, I love The Fix. I still love The Fix. I just bought their latest album. I've seen them twice in the last 12 months. Still great. Cy Kernan can still sing. Uh, Jamie West Orm's a great guitar player. Um, another one is Honeymoon Suite from Canada. Um, I love their, their second album. The Big Prize is a great album. They have a later one that is a more of a throwback. There's a throwback to that called Clifton Hill that's great. It's really good pop pop rock. You know, you're not, you're not going to be blown away by um the overt musicianship even though uh, the dairy the uh, guitar player is very good um i just o- always just like their their melodies and their uh their songwriting just good stuff to me um just always love devo they're goofy they're they're weird their last full album something for nothing was great I still listen to that um another one that i think we bounced around last week there's a halloween at least on our chat was oingo boingo love oh, oingo boingo Genius. Talk about a talk about some whacked dudes, but with the with the horns and, and, and the guitar playing on that is great. Danny Elfman's a genius. Love that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then one that my wife actually got me into. I really enjoy listening to Sarah McLaughlin. I think she's got an amazing voice. Mm-hmm. We went and saw her live one time, and she was absolutely amazing. And her rapport with her crowd was unbelievable. To the point where she had a couch on stage and every once in a while she'd invite someone random to come up and sit on the stage and just watch her play from up there and it was just it was like a love fest it was really really a cool show and she's just amazing she's a seems like a wonderful person and she's got a great voice um band i should have seen but haven't that would be steely dan i've actually never seen steely dan now i would have liked to have seen them before walter becker died Mm -hmm. but you know i still have a chance there yeah, you um, should go. I saw Donald Fagan. No. Mm-hmm. What's I didn't that? See Steel- I saw Donald Fagan, oh. but I didn't see Steely Dan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is going to come full circle. Not going to be a surprise. I don't care if I'm repeating myself. But my favorite band always to see live was Rush. Watching those three guys do what they do with their with their light show and their 
their their movies and the sense of humor and everything they brought to the stage. They were just consummate professionals that had a hell of a lot of fun on stage together. And they were always my favorite. So seeing them was just, it was like a holiday to me. So uh, saw them 16, 17 times. Just rushes my ultimate. And I don't care if their answers. I've answered them to three of the questions. All right. So there's my list. Very cool. Chuck. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, once again, I uh, hope uh, our good buddy George is feeling better. Um, what's a good evening, gentlemen? Evening. A band that I hate. You know, what's it? I've already spoken about this band ad nauseum because I just think that they're just a terrible, terrible band. You know, yes. what's a, uh, <laughs> it's gotta be kids. Kiss. <laughs> the Red Hot Chili Peppers, great musicians, even better live, but they just suck. I don't like their music. <laughs> I don't think their music is good. I, I don't like their voice. I, I just don't like the band. You know, I just, whenever they play on someone else's stuff, they're awesome. But their stuff is just shitty, man. Just probably the worst band I've, just a terrible band. I'll leave it at that. A band that I find overrated. Now, most over here know that I am a big punk fan. Um, what's to that? I think what's a, like I said, What's a when you mention someone being overrated, and so that doesn't necessarily mean that you hate the band or so or the or the person, but the clash. I find it to be very overrated. What's wow. that? And yes. What's that? Because the band that I find that's underrated, which part of their peers is Wire. Wire is um, what's that puts those bands to shame. I think that their What's a Wire was perhaps the mm -hmm. best um, British um, punk band that ever came by. Matter of fact, they were so good that they were even they they weren't even considered punk. They were considered like the beginnings of post punk. You know, very I've progressive in punk. nature. I've never heard um, of punk snob talk before. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> wire, Wire, What's a could appeal to a lot of prog fans because they the more they went on, especially with their second and third albums, they became a bit more progish. So Wire was my most underrated. A band that I fell in love with and that I love still to this day, which is not a favorite of many, but it's a favorite of mine, which is Radiohead. I love Radiohead from the beginnings of their well, the album, which um, was basically influenced by bands like Nirvana and the Seattle scene to their more progressive stuff going forward. It's Radiohead. Um, then a band that I could listen to over and over again, which is XTC. You know, I love XTC. What's I know that many have mentioned Oingo Boingo. I love Oingo Boingo just as much as I love XTC. Uh, what's that? I would say that XTC is the American, ver I mean, the British version of Oingo Boingo. A band that made me fall in love with music was The Police. They were the first band that I ever got to truly listen to where I got to listen to musicianship. And what's that? I actually got to see them live, what's a, which was odd because I had to go with my sister, my sister Betty, who's just a year older than me. We went all the way to Nassau Coliseum to see them. You know, um, what's a, and that was um, during the Synchronicity Tour. Um, also, I got to see, and what's a, um, that was my favorite band. A band that changed my life is Genesis. And Genesis is my gateway to Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Frank Zappa, and Weather Report. Those five bands mean the world to me. But Genesis, if it wasn't for Genesis, I wouldn't be into those bands right there. Um, a band that surprised me. Uh, what's a, as you know, most people also know that I'm a big fan of hip hop as well. Uh, a band that really surprised me was the Beastie Boys. You know, the Beastie Boys might sound like, uh, like a band that hey, people look at them, you don't know whether or not they're hip hop or they're punk band or they're pop band. I got to see them what's a, um, very early on in their stages opening up for, what's it for, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was for Eric B and Rakim. But anyway, to go a little further on that, and people were assuming that they were gonna be one of these schmaltzy um, guys that just was up there and just joking around. And so they went on They went on stage and basically blew everyone off the stage. That's how good they were. That's the Beastie Boys. A guilty pleasure, because like I said, I'm a big music fan, um, is Depeche Mode. I love Depeche Mode. You know, what so that they might seem like a schlocky band to a lot of people as well, and so, but they the further that they got away from their first album, which was basically an outlier in regards in, in regards to their entire collection, they just got darker and darker and much more progressive as they went onward. Um, a band that I should have seen live, sorry guys, um, Kansas. 
you know, I really wish that I've gotten to see Kansas before, before, um, you know, um, before, but it's still a great band. I have friends that are into them that get to see them quite a bit every time they tour. And my favorite band that I've ever got to see live is Fishbone. I've seen Fishbone five times and four to five times, they were absolutely astounding. You know, what's to that date? What's to that, for people that like <laughs> what's a Red Hot Chili Peppers, just think about Fishbone, which is 10 times superior. <laughs> so that's my take yeah. on it. Those are my bands right there. All right. All right. Lewis. Okay. Oh, here go. Wait, here we go. Let me get warmed up. I have some <laughs> notes. And I know that we're not supposed to take too long, so I'll try to be quick. All right. Um, we have already discussed uh, Kiss, which is truly, truly a fucking aberration in every way. And it's anti music to me. <laughs> uh, it, 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 there is nobody I hate more than fucking Gene Simmons. Although, uh, if Paul Stanley was in flames next to me, and I was dying to go to the bathroom, I would piss around him, <laughs> not on him. Now, having said that, I think um, because I took the I took the the mission of just Prague. I gotta say that I have a very strong hate for anything John Anderson solo. <laughs> And that hate really? came directly from, from, from seeing him live. <laughs> I've never met the man. He may be the greatest guy. I don't hate the person. I hate the persona. <laughs> I hate the lyrics. I hate the bullshit. I hate him serenading <laughs> his wife. I hate everything about him. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Not for me. <laughs> I'll just say it as long as I'm alive. As simple as that. I like yes in spite of him. <laughs> that's how good that music is and i appreciate that he's a good writer because he made a lot of these records special the early ones but everybody calm the fuck down john anderson <laughs> he's not missed not by me <laughs> now band that i think is overrated um that's difficult because in fact most of these questions are difficult because i can't really just answer with one you know I think there's many bands that you could argue are overrated just because they they did a couple of good things and then they've just been milking them for decades, right? So, but for me, I I have two. And I, I you know, I love you, Chuck, but uh, Raid Ahead is one of them. <laughs> and the reason I say that is also, I, I want to be very transparent about it. I had a run-in with, with them in Mexico during the Pablo Honey tour. Oh, and uh, <laughs> words were exchanged, and I almost beat up the singer, and um, I just fucked those guys. But the other band that I've never met, and um, I, I, I just dislike how popular they are, in spite of the fact that they can barely play their instruments, is U2. I mean, U2 yep. is a fucking joke to me. Straight up. I know, I know there's going to be a lot of Irish people and American people hating me. I don't give a fuck. They suck. And Bono is the biggest joke of them all. <laughs> With his fucking shades and his message. Uh, fuck that guy. So no. <laughs> now, band that I think is underrated. I'm very glad that Morgabo has been mentioned a lot because I would completely agree with that. I think um, it, it's difficult for me to imagine a band that is more absolutely stellar in every way that matters entertainment value musicianship composition these guys do it all so if joe satriani's watching us people put them on the fucking bill please put them on the fucking bill have some balls and let this guy get on stage and do his thing you're already there give this guy a chance all right the world will thank you all right you'll go down to history as a good guy for doing that so give him a shot. Personally, I would say a band that I think is very, very underrated would be a tie between Discipline and Eklund. Mm -hmm. they're, they're bands that I think make unbelievably great quality music that nobody yep. fucking knows. Yep. And to me, that's a crime. Uh, bands that I love. Um, again, there's many, but I would have to say I, I love Black Sabbath. Fucking Black Sabbath, that is more addictive than heroin or pussy. It's just wonderful. <laughs> And um, I love Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden was essential for me growing up. But I also love Deep Purple. 
Mm -hmm. You know, come on, right? You listen, the first, one of the first records I ever bought with my own money was Deep Purple and Rock. I, I didn't almost shit myself. I, I sat there in tears. It was it was a, a, a light, it was it was amazing to hear that music, right? So, yeah. Now bands that I listen to over and over again. That's tough, right? Because we get old, we get jaded, and mm -hmm. it's difficult for things to surprise you and keep surprising you, right? But I have to say that um, for me, uh, the music of Frank Zappa is going to be up there. I mean, there is. I always learn when I when I play Frank Zappa. Mm -hmm. I, 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 and I can play a record that I have played, I don't know, 300 times, 400 times. And like, I didn't realize that layer was there. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand that arrangement. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's, I can listen to that over and over. Um, a close second would be Gentle Giant as well, mm -hmm. um, for sure. Um, band that made me fall in love with music. That is easy. There's only one. And that would be The Who. I, I was, I, I was, I, it's a long story. I'm not going to get into the details, but I was camping in, in, as a kid, I was sent to a camp in Northern Ontario. Right. And as um, far from Mexico as possible. I get it. Yeah. Well, no, they, they, they could have sent me to Mongolia, but they, they, they sent me to Ontario instead. I was, a, I was a horrible teen. All right. And, um, and, the, it was also a year where there was a postal strike and, and there was no way to communicate with home. Like I was ET, couldn't call home. That was me. <laughs> and um, and this this woman there, she had this, this tape and she kept in this song over and over. And it was a song by The Who called Music Must Change. And there's something about that song that spoke to me. Like the, the combination of the sound, the lyric, the weirdness of it now that I know that Keith Moon couldn't even play the fucking drums to it because it was a 6'8", right? Everything about it, it was just haunting and beautiful and it, 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 it made me fall in love with music. It really did. The Who music was changed was the thing for me. Mm -hmm. Band that changed my life. Um, that's a tie. I think that the one that caused the, the strongest impression in me, the one that really made me reevaluate things a lot, was when I first heard Pink Floyd, The Wall. I heard it the year it came out. And that is a very personal story to me. It almost seemed like it was written about me in a very strange way. And it really freaked me out. I didn't understand the whole thing about the rock star and all that shit. That, to me, that's not my life. But everything else about it was me and, and the sound. And, and those guitars, I mean, they sound modern today. Yep. Right? So... And, and people can love to shit on Roger Waters as much as they want. I give zero fucks. That record is a masterpiece. And I love every second of it. To me, right? I know that one man's treasure is another one's garbage. But to me, that was just amazing. So, But on, on the other side was King Crimson. And King Crimson really just said to me, okay, you have now a mission in life. You need to grab dissonance by the balls and use it as a weapon. Mm -hmm. And you have to use rhythm and combine it with harmony and do these things. And uh, it just completely changed the way I thought about music and the way I thought about what a group could do and how it kept changing and changing and changing. And things that like Red and um, Beat are the same fucking group. It's almost, mm -hmm. it doesn't even make sense, right? So it, it's just a, like a, a monster that keeps changing shape and keeps doing things. And it was great. So that changed my life. Band that surprised me. I never thought I would have to say this, but I guess I should be grateful to fucking Hollow Notes because apparently without Hollow Notes, there would have been no Near Fest. Mm -hmm. And without no Near Fest, I would have never heard Banco del Mutuo Socorso. And um, so when I, I didn't know who the fuck they were. And I, and I thought, you know, Sometimes the Near Fest headliners were hit or miss for me. So I, it was early on, but I remember telling Jeff, you know what, I'm going to give these guys three songs. And if they suck, we'll beat the traffic. Third song in, I am trying like a, a fat, I wasn't a fat guy. I was a fat chick with no date on prom night. I was crying tears of joy listening to this band. It was, it was one of the most incredible experiences listening to them live. So they really surprised me because I, I was sure they were going to suck just from the name, right? <laughs> and just, I just thought, yeah, this, this, how could this be any good? 
And as usual, when I'm wrong, I am dead wrong and I'm glad because it, it was amazing. Now we come to guilty pleasures. And um, truly, I, I do mean it. I, I don't have guilt simply because I don't give a fuck what people think about me at all. I like what I like, and if people don't like it, it doesn't affect my enjoyment of it in any way, right? Mm -hmm. But the way that I took this is, I would just wanted to list three artists that people may be surprised to know that I, I, I like and genuinely respect and admire <laughs> that you wouldn't think, right? One of them has got to be Lady Gaga. Hmm. That woman can sing, she can write, she can fucking dance, and she's nice single-handedly kicked kick Metallica's ass, yeah. all of them at the same time, right? I mean, so I gotta respect that. And she is like, what, five foot tall? Mm -hmm. And she's just a, a force of nature. So a lot of respect to her. Um, uh, Tori Amos is another artist that mm -hmm. I absolutely love, who writes about some difficult things for her and some very personal, but it's a beautiful thing to hear for me. The Boys for Pelly is one of my favorite records, you know. And I, I love Tracy Chapman. Me too. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, as Chuck, I, I do like hip hop and all that, but, and I do bring it in because I do believe that it's important to discuss when music is trying new things and pushing boundaries and trying to progress in its form and its possibility, right? And I know, I know that prog fans like to think of themselves as very open minded. And I have the data on you, motherfuckers. I know who you are. <laughs> so I, uh, I am just bringing that to you every chance I get. Because I think it's important that we keep each other honest, right? So I didn't mention hip hop, but you know, those three are good examples of a certain music that people would normally never imagine me listening to, right? Mm -hmm. um, a band that I should have seen by now, but haven't. Again, I never saw Genesis because by the time I had an opportunity to see them, they were not the Genesis I cared about. And I, I, I could see the music box and I could see Steve Hackett. So why the fuck bother? That was my mm -hmm. position, right? But, um, and Steve Hackett, my God, amazing. Mm -hmm. So, but two bands that I would really have loved to have seen and I never got a chance to do so. One of them was, um, I love Rage Against the Machine. Mm -hmm. I've never seen them. Saw them twice. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and the other one is Primus. Mm. For some reason, every I, I have seen Les Claypool play solo, but I've never seen Primus. Every time Primus goes to wherever I live, I'm on tour. I just never get a chance to see them, right? Or I have a local gig, right? I just, it just every time. So I've never been able to see them. And favorite band to see live, um, Again, there's just so many. I have been very, very fortunate to, to have seen so many great shows. I mean, I it's hard to pick. I mean, I, I again, I think for personal reasons, I, I love seeing Roger Waters live. I've seen Pink Floyd live without him. I don't care for that. Um, I, I love this last incarnation of King Crimson. I think that my daughter said it best. My daughter, as a young girl, I took her to see King Crimson because I wanted her to to know what was my musical DNA, because music means so much to me, and I wanted to share that with her. She, she said that King Crimson does with sound what Roger Waters does with video. And I thought that was a beautiful way of saying, saying what actually happens on that stage. But on, on the other side of the spectrum, I mean, how can you beat Morgable? Morgable are so good live that I once opened a show for them, and then when they played, I forgot I played. <laughs> so you know it, it's as simple as that I, the audience. yeah it, 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 they're, they're, they're phenomenal and um, I love Morgable I also absolutely love Universe Zero and I love Magma holy shit you know uh, Magma I know that it gives Pete conniptions but um, <laughs> I I uh, again you know it, it's, it's like you're, you're not only did somebody catch lightning in a bottle, but then they shoved it up your ass. It's, so, it's just like all of your attention is in that moment and in that weird language you don't understand and you're in it. It's like you're just captured by it. So I, I love Magma. I think Magma is a band that um, people should see live 
even if they hate them. You should see them live. <laughs> That's it. All right. Band I hate. Well, if someone shoved them up my ass, please get them the fuck out of there immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody call a proctologist and send him to Pete's house. Help me out. He won't even say the name. Get him write it down. I'd rather not. They've been setting up. It's like a curse. Uh, (laughs) Curse of the Tobians. God, magma. Uh, Ben, I think, is overrated. Um, I don't get all the adulation for the Mars Volta. They don't do anything for me. I don't know. People Same love here. them. And when they first came out, I was like, oh, the new great prog band. <laughs> I, just, I, I don't know, man. They don't do anything for me. I just, I, I, I don't know. I tried. I really tried hard. Uh, band, I think, is underrated. Uh, Wishbone Ash. Yeah. You know, to me, I love Pat Travers to death. But man, the night at SOT Fall Fest, when I came walking up to Pat with, with Andy Powell, and Pat had no idea who Andy was, I'm like, that is the biggest shame in this world. Because to me, Wishbone Ash are legends. And I don't know why everybody doesn't know who they are. Especially Andy Powell. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, come on, man. That is one amazing guitar player, man. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Band I love. I mean, last night on the Hudson Valley Squares, I said Deep Purple. I could, I could, like Chuck, I could say Black Sabbath for almost half these questions here. Uh, I'm going to go with Gentle Giant. they're just geniuses to me. Uh, such a great band. I can listen to them anytime. Uh, but band I can listen to over and over and over again. Uh, you know, Stephen and I did a, a show for uh, for tomorrow. And uh, Jethro Tull. Yes. I can listen to Jethro Tull any day, any time, and feel so good about listening to Jethro Tull, whether it's an early album, mid-period album, Ian Anderson solo. I think it's just Ian Anderson in general. There's something about this guy that when I hear his music, I feel happy. And I just, I find I can listen to Tull music all the time and not get sick of it. Plus they got a million albums too, which kind of helps. But uh, uh, band that made me fall in love with music. Eric, raise that album, please. You wanted the best and you got the best. The hottest band in the world. Kiss. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, naysayers. Oh Ten-year-old me in 1976 was a Kiss fanatic. I still like it. Um, you're a pattern here. You, you get into it when you're 10. It's 10-year-old music. Not? I guess I'm See, we, had, we had a theory that kids who were no. into Kiss got too much oxygen at birth. So not to... Uh... <laughs> I, I still listen to them. Yeah. Well, how in life came. No, 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 no. We can't put them down. I mean, they're, they're, there's so many, so much variety in the Kiss fans, right? Um, I, I was once told by somebody just to defend Pete and you guys who like Kiss so much that they thought, and this was somebody who was not an imbecile, and he said, "I think that Kiss a are like the American Beatles." Because you know, if, if, if a yoga drooler says it, it's not surprising, right? Or whatever. But this guy was an intelligent person, and I, I was really, really shocked by that. Wow. Did you say yoga droolers? I, I, I said yoga an, droolers, yes. Wow. <laughs> there's an okay. important difference here, which is, it's about the band I love, okay? Yeah. And you guys are talking about musicianship and all these things, and I admire all of that, obviously. It's the mystique. It's the story. It's the journey. It's the garbage. It's the nonsense. It's You're a mark. I can disregard most of what they say these days. It's just a fallacy. You don't have but to explain I love, yourself. I love the band. I love Even the this is what thing. this is what grifters do. They they find marks like yourself, and they sell you all this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that. that. That is you know? completely utterly missing the point. As well, <laughs> yes. that is, I don't. I don't have to be drooling because the guy can. Do a list on the thing. Absolutely. What, Absolutely. What's the music out there that you think, wow, this guy can play and it's boring as shit? And mm-hmm. that's not, a, they were never boring. Yeah, yeah. Such a variety of different reasons. And mm-hmm. when you are young, and I'm talking teens, not when I was 10, that was exciting. And they've taken me on a journey in a way that lots of phenomenal musicians never could. But I, I absolutely understand why people hate them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no need to defend yourself. You're very like divisive. Like absolutely. You know, absolutely. I am. Um, yeah. Band that changed my life without question. In 1979, I listened to Paranoid by Black Sabbath. I've never been the same. 
and that band continues to captivate me all these years later. I love Black Sabbath. The same here. Love everything about them. A uh, band that surprised me. Uh, this is a band, it, they surprised me because normally I don't think I'd really like a band like this all that much, but I, I find I like them a lot. And that's Van de Graaff Generator. You know, they don't really have much guitar in the music. Uh, the music's kind of weird. The vocalist has got a really weird style. They're angry. Uh, the music sounds like it's in a hurricane. Yeah, <laughs> playing just, apart you know, from each other. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I shouldn't like Van de Graaff Generator, but surprisingly enough, I am very attracted to them and their music. So that, that's kind of surprising them. to me. Absolutely uh, love them. Guilty Pleasure. I mean, man, there's a lot. I listen to a lot of shit that most people wouldn't expect me to listen to, but I... I think Christopher Cross is a lot of fun, man. You know, it's like, it's a lot of excellent these- guitars. Yeah. He's, he's a great, great guitar, guitar player. Yeah, he's a great <laughs> guitar player. I, I, you know, ride like the wind is a terrific song, you yeah. know, sailing. Great yacht a- rock song. Drippy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of, he, he, he played with deep purple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For like one show. Yes, mm-hmm. One show. Uh, band I should have seen by now, but haven't. And I hinted at it today in our chat. I've never seen Peter Gabriel. I've had so many opportunities. Never wow. saw him. We'd love to. Incredible live performer. We'd love Incredible. to. Yeah. And favorite band to see live? Uh, I mean, you know, last night on the squares, I said Dream Theater because I've seen Dream Theater 20 some odd times. I've Other than only seeing them once on the Astonishing Tour, and that was once too many. I've yes. seen them at least on every single tour and sometimes two or three times a tour. I love seeing Dream Theater live because they're so amazing. They play a different set every year. They used to play a different set from night to night back when Portnoy was in the band. They just impressed the hell out of me, and I never get tired of seeing them. But, you know, not to repeat myself from last night, but I think uh, another favorite band to see live, because going to see Black Sabbath live when they were still around was an event, and I got to see it with Ozzy, with Dio, with Ian Gillen, and with Glenn Hughes. I only didn't get to see him with Tony Martin. Is the only one I didn't get to see them with. I didn't see Ian Gillen either. They were uh, not I, I saw the Born Again tour, man. That was, yeah. that was something else. That was something else. So, uh, yeah, so I'll, for tonight, I'll pick uh, Black Sabbath, but yeah, Dream Theater is, you know, really the number one, but uh, yeah, that's my list. That's my list. Well, we, we didn't kill each other tonight, at least. No. <laughs> why, why would we? No, why? Exactly. You know, remember, we're the, we're the peaceful um, set here. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, did Anthony not even send a, a, a list? Okay. All right. All right. We're going to. Just, I can't wait to see the comments. Yeah. <laughs> we, you know, what can I say? It was fun. It's fun. It fun. Yes, it was Absolutely. Fun. Always fun. So there you have it, everybody. Two nights of uh, all of us on Hudson Valley Squares and in the Prague seat taking the social media music challenge. But don't touch that dial because there's another one coming in a couple of weeks. So uh, we'll divulge that more uh, in, in the next week or two. And uh, But next week, Stay tuned for. Are we doing two letters next week? Did we say we're gonna do? Well, we're up to we're N. Just doing N. Yeah, we're up to N. I know we, we said we were gonna lump a couple together because they're really light. I have my ends. N is kind of light. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll we'll discuss it. So you'll either get just N or N and maybe O. So we'll see uh, as it goes. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. List your picks down in the comments below all right be interesting to read what everybody comes up with and visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org we're on facebook we're on youtube all together all, all the damn time, damn time. Um, and we got out five minutes early before Stephen was going to turn into a pumpkin so i think uh, we <laughs> mission accomplished tonight. So, thanks for watching everybody for lewis for eric for Stephen, for chuck for chad and for ken and George, 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 hope you're feeling better. Uh, I am yeah, Pete Barrow. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next week here on In the Prog Seat. Stay tuned for lots of new album release reviews tomorrow coming at you. So till then, be good, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone.